Somebody once said, Yu-Gi-Oh! is one of the most difficult trading card games to get into, and then proceeded to start the game from scratch using only sealed products twice. That was me, actually. I did that. Hey, how's it going? The goal with that was always just to have fun and experience everything that Yu-Gi-Oh! has to offer to the fullest extent. Building decks, opening packs, competing in tournaments. But over the course of those two years, I couldn't help but realize something big was missing. A key feature of the game so important that it's literally in the name. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a trading card game, but throughout the years, what once was a core mechanic slowly became a chore mechanic. It used to be this wondrous event in the playground as kids, getting a glimpse into someone else's collection, their own crafted cardboard world, searching for that shiny cardboard gem you need to progress your own Yu-Gi-Oh! adventure. Nowadays, it's just kind of a hassle, comparing values, avoiding scammers, posting cards, trying to avoid all the predators that are desperate to gain value through unfavorable trades. God, I hate it so much. And when you can just buy the cards you need off of sites like eBay, it's like, why even bother going through all of that? The convenience of money killed the joy of trading but I want to bring that joy back. If we want the purest Yu-Gi-Oh! experience possible, we're gonna need to start from scratch again and lock our progress not only to sealed products, but this time to trading with fellow duelists as well. This is how Konami originally intended for people to play their game. They literally have an entire page about it on their website. So you could say we're now officially playing Yu-Gi-Oh! properly. Subscribe. Once again, we find ourselves at humble beginnings, and I don't know what it is, but there's always just something so exciting about starting from scratch. You know, picking up a new deck for the first time and not knowing exactly where your adventure is going to take you, it really just hits a spot for me. So when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh!, it's obviously no secret that the greatest starting point is, of course, three of the same structure deck. Anyone will tell you that. Heck, I'm pretty sure even Konami tells you that in one of their beginner guides, and coincidentally, they just recently printed one of the greatest structure deck products of all time. So our starting point for this brand new journey is three copies of the structure deck Alabaz Strike and then from there we'll start spending £20 a week on sealed product and then hopefully make some trades each week, blah 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 blah. I would like to say that uh, starting off with three structure decks we don't really have much trade bait in here. But we don't use half of the cards, like even Pot of Extravagance in here like isn't necessary for the deck because you do use the extra deck, so we could potentially trade away the Extravagance for uh, better cards, and I still don't know where we're going to take this, there's so many different ways, like we could go pure Despia branded Albaz, or we could go, you know, more fun sort of like Predaplan Albaz, or something like Shadal Albaz, I don't know, the world is our oyster, and it all begins here with our three copies of Albaz Strike, so we're going to crack into one of these look through the contents, and then we will put our deck together before going to locals. Of course, here is our beautiful paper playmat with Lubellion and Mirror Jade, incredible boss monster, and we have our little lore story on the back there. We recently got a card revealed where it looks like Fleur de Lis has uh, popped her clogs, you know, she's died in battle, and you know, it was very sad. But yeah, they've done some really cool things with this structure deck, obviously the lore being included, and they've done some cool tokens as well, with lore sentences on the tokens, which is really cool, I think that's the first time that's ever happened. Uh, yeah, we've already mentioned all this in our previous opening of this structure deck, so we're gonna try and not repeat ourselves here. We do, of course, have... Advertisement. Advertisement. Ad oh, nope. <laughs> that's a luber. Alright, so, we have a tri-brigade, a little golden bird, that's our negate. Spring Gans Kit, Searches Branded Fusion, amazing card. Uh, the Golden Sword, so we have Mirror Jade, our boss monster, potentially even just the boss monster of the format. This thing is crazy. I don't know why it's a soft once per turn. Uh, yeah, amazing. Lubellion, Branded Fusion, just again, like the card of the format. It's actually insane. Branded Sword, Retribution, Counter Trap, kind of awkward to use sometimes. Fallen of Albaz in common. Originally came in Secret Rare from Rise of the Duelist, reprinted as an Ultra in the Tins. Now we have a common Albi on the Shrouded Dragon, Fleur de Lis. Red MD, Thunder King, we got some Kaijus, Chaos Dragon, Levianir, some good going first cards, some good going second cards, some good Chaos cards, just all around good cards in general. Artifact Scythe, really dumb card, but you know, we can actually use this to our advantage. Our little Dragon Link package here, Triple Safer, is really cool, but uh, like I said before in previous videos, you don't really use the Dragon Link package in this deck. So right off the bat, we either have the means to build a Dragon Link deck, or we actually have some trade bait to, you know, trade away for some probably cheap cards in return. We have Keeper of Dragon Magic here, Summoner Monk and Ghost Ogre, we got some hand traps, really good this format against the Adventure Engine. 
Brotar branded lost amazing card, very underrated, was played as a one of in the YCS Bogota winning list, but in the structure deck we definitely play three. I've seen so many people just not play this card or not care about this card or play one of this card, dude, you play three, it's actually broken. Branded and white, branded bond, we got fusion gate, some fusion cards here. Gold Sark, very good card in this deck because it's basically just a rota. Ooh, is this the most expensive card in the structure deck? I'm not actually sure, but Pot of Extravagance, amazing reprint. Called by the Grave, Dark Ruler no more, just, uh, it's actually insane, dude. Such a good starting point. Screams of the Branded, Judgment of the Branded, Necro Fusion back to the front as well. That's how we get our Scythe out. Warning point, there can be only one D barrier. Also very good this format against Despia, like potentially one of the best, well, it is basically the best deck of the format right now. Waken the Dragon, we got Titanoclad, all of our extra deck monsters, and of course, our five tokens. The artworks on these is incredible. It's such a good inclusion. I wish they were holofoil, but uh, at least we got them, you know? So yeah, very, very strong deck. This thing is actually capable of, well, I mean, not one copy, but when you put three of these together, you're actually capable of putting out six interruptions with a god hand, of course. So that is the contents of one structure deck. I'm now gonna crack open these other two and we can put our three copies together, and come out the other end with a nice deck list. <laughs> Alright, I've done my research, literally watched like every three structure deck profile out there and, you know, not to lick my own stink ring or anything, but I genuinely haven't found a decent enough reason to deviate from my initial list. We are going to run through the deck profile here, but for a little more in-depth discussion of all the cards in the structure deck, you can go watch that video, I'll link it in the description. But getting into it here, we of course have our three copies of Branded Fusion. This is our main engine. Everything revolves around this card, of course. So uh, we want to max out on this and see this as much as possible. We have three copies of Spring Gan's kit. She, of course, searches for the Branded Fusion and then places one card from your hand to the bottom of the deck. Three copies of Keeper of Dragon Magic. Discard one, search for the Branded Fusion. And then we have a Gold Sarcophagus, which can banish the little bird to search for Spring Gan's kit, which then once again normal summons to search the Branded Fusion. So that is 10 starters in our deck that sort of gets the ball rolling for our engine there. We then have three Pot of Extravagance. We want to see this card because we don't require our entire extra deck. However, you can get unlucky and banish like three Mirror Jade, which, you know, kind of just instantly loses the game right there. It's a game of chance. We like to gamble. Pot of Extravagance, seeing that card advantage gets you to the Branded Fusion. It is a consistency card, so we want to play three of these as well as three Albion the Shrouded Dragon. And I'll be honest, this is a pretty good card. That joke didn't really land in the last video, so I'm making it again, okay? Laugh, damn it. This is basically like an upstart goblin if we see it in the hand, so we are maxing out on that to increase the consistency of our deck. Also puts a branded speller trap in the graveyard, which can be useful as you will see later on. Three copies of Branded Lost. Literally every profile I watched basically only plays one or none of this card. And they're all, I hate to say this, but they're all wrong, dude. This card is insane. This is like our only engine extender. It increases the ceiling of our deck. Like, uh, you could say it's win more, but a singular Mirror Jade is not going to win the game. This sort of ensures our victory. It allows us to play second more easily. It gains loads of advantage over multiple turns. You know, it's just an incredible card. Basically our only extender in the deck. We're playing three copies of Branded Lost and off of this we are most commonly going to search two copies of our Tri Brigade Mercurier. This is the start of our interruptions in our main deck. It's pretty much a hand trap but it's like Ghost Ogre you can send it from field as well. So in response to literally any monster effect we just send this to the grave and negate that effect. Getting into our individual generic interruptions we have one copy of Called by the Grave. This also protects our plays. Uh, we basically lose to Ash on Branded Fusion so uh, we really want to see Called by the Grave if we're trying to resolve Branded Fusion. If we don't need to protect ourselves from hand traps then you know it's a good interruption interruption against our opponent. We also have three copies of the Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, three copies of Effect Failure, three copies of Warning Point. These are all just extra interruptions in the deck and three copies of Back to the Front with one copy of Artifact Scythe. If we summon this on our opponent's turn from the graveyard with Back to the Front, we can activate its effect to lock our opponent out of the extra deck for the entire turn. If we are resolving Branded Fusion, we'll always send this to the graveyard and then if we have Back to the Front in hand, our opponent is most likely going to cry. Then essentially for our engine requirements, we of course have two copies 
of Fallen of Albaz. It doesn't do a whole lot at three. Three might be better if you are going second, but frankly, we just don't really have the space. We want to go first and we don't want to see it in hand. We shuffle it back into the deck with Lubellion anyway, so we're playing two. One copy of Branded Retribution. This is our counter trap, although it's kind of awkward to set up. You do kind of require having two fusion monsters on the board or it being late game. So we are playing only one to search off Spring Gun's kit, for example, when we need it. And then we are playing one copy of Branded Swords to send to the graveyard off of Albion's effect in the hand and one copy of Judgment of the Branded to send to the graveyard of Albion's effect in the graveyard. This can reset itself in the end phase and it's basically like a Brygeki for 2500 or higher attack monsters. It's not amazing, but you know, it's an interruption that we can't access, so that's why we're playing it. Extra deck. Boss monster brings out, boss monster brings out, boss monster beater, fodder, fodder. Side deck. Go second break board. Nice DPE, nice Baron. Call fusion, no more birds. Easy, amazing deck. So overall for like £30, you have a very good deck list that functions well and gets the job done. Sure, there's no intricate combos or overly complex interactions, just activate Branded Fusion, bring out Mirror Jade and couple it with your other interruptions. It's a very good starting point for new players and even allows you to branch off in multiple directions. Also, just in case you were wondering, we actually got our little trade binder started here as well. Look at that man, it looks so good already. But uh, yeah, obviously we're not expecting to make any trades today. Probably next time. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. The heck is that? Bro. Huh. Okay. But uh, yeah, we are due some prize packs after locals today. So hopefully we can pull a juicy OTS ultimate rare. Use that as trade bait in the coming episodes and uh, go from there. But to do that, of course, we need to actually go to locals. So let's gear up. Welcome to Reset, home of Yu-Gi-Oh! in Aberdeen. When the pandemic first started, I had to give up the locals that I was personally running, but our local gaming cafe took the reins for the Yu-Gi-Oh! scene, and over the course of the last three years, the Aberdeen scene, which was once dwindling, has like at least doubled in size. What used to be a pathetic three-round locals in a random bar has now evolved to consistent five-round locals every week here at the shop. It's a great place with great people, but most importantly, it's gonna be great content. So with that being said, it's time to duel. Now for the sake of time in this series, we're gonna have one live match every episode and then we'll sum up the rest of the rounds in that locals. However, if you do want to see the play-by-play -play for every round, instead of just wasting the footage, I will be uploading the full matches over on Patreon. YouTube channel members will also be able to get access to these, but regardless, let's get into it. Round one, we played against Jerry's True Draco Dogmatica Eldritch deck. With literally no back row provided in the structure deck, I thought, you know, this would be a huge issue, but then I realized Mirror Jade doesn't really care about Eldritch. Jerry did unfortunately play into his own restrictions a couple of times, so we did take the dub 2-0, even getting a kill with the branded sword tokens in game 1. Moving on to round 2, we're up against Chris's branded Tri-Brigade. We unfortunately did lose here, but we didn't lose to Tri-Brigade, no, 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 we lost to our own pot of extravagance. <laughs> Oh, are you serious? Oh, that's an instant loss. Oh my god. Uh, does that resolve? Yeah, that resolves. Oh my god. It, oh my god. This is horrible. Three Mirror Jade banished, two bricks drawn. Sound. Round 3, losing the die roll to Kelby's Orcist Eldritch proved to be a little bit of an issue. He kept setting up Crescendo to stop Branded Fusion, but we did get him in game 2, and then he bricked game 3, so we took the dub 2-1. Round 4, surprisingly, we're actually against another Orcist Eldritch, this time piloted by Callum. How are we getting so many Eldritch matchups, man? With no back row removal? Riddle me this. Thankfully though, we do manage to get the swift 2-0 sweep. So we are currently 3-1 at this locals, going into round 5 at table 1. If we win this, we probably win locals, which would make this a very short series. I don't know how I feel about that, it just goes to show how strong this structure deck is, but we win the die roll against Leo's Despia branded adventurer DPE deck. My guy is pretty much playing a house deposit at this point. Extra. That's fine. Uh, any response? No, it's fine. Activate the Pulsar. That's fine. Do you know what all the cards do? Basically, yeah, they're more obscure, but so he searches yeah, Albaz on a monster. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Does it affect okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Add kit. You want some kit? Kit's fine. I'm sending a message to you, boys, bash, boom. 
place this on the wall. That quite round the lost. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, scythe and others. Yeah, no wonder you're getting away with structure. Like fucking scythe, I forgot about that. Yeah, if you use Albion, chain one Albion, chain two around the lost to search. That's fine. Search kit. One Balbaz plus a dark. That's fine. Wow, really five minutes to think of it, not Send sword for cost. Mm -hmm. Would you like to bell me off? <laughs> I mean, it's tempting, but no, go on. Um, it's on the bottom. I will let you go. Uh, activate sword, target Mercurio. Yep. In fact, it's a bird. Keep saying, oh, welcome to the walls. No, it doesn't. He says it does it. Well, faster. Draw. Draw standby. Let's go. Adventure. Ooh, you have the engine. Every time I play against adventure, they always open fatal. They yeah. always open the bricks. I was gonna say, you just made me open bricks. I hate you. Fuck you. Effect to uh, search. I will open. Yeah, well, fuck you too. Let's try Alibo effect. Oh shit. Chain one. That's actually a bit insane. Is that actually. Wow, that cucks me. Good job. Let's go. Granted, you know, anyway. <laughs> Just how it scared you, you know, like, what the fuck are you gonna do? That's fine. How about... The secret rare first dance? Yeah, well, it only comes in first dance. Yeah, true. Fucking quit. Can I Tragedy. Yeah. Rebellion. So Thinking on chain rate. Mm -hmm. One rebellion, pitch retribution as cost, two tragedy. Tragedy searches, right? Yes, a uh, Despio monster. Chain Then resolve tragedy. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Then resolve rebellion. Shuffle mm -hmm. back Albaz and himself. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> then you can fight through because I'm not allowed to win, okay? Shove. <laughs> Wait, can I still attack with Arubo? Uh, no. What the fuck? <laughs> Cards actually crack. No, common charity will never be the same. So, do you want to see you getting super outscaled? <laughs> Fusion does <doesn't. laughs> <laughs> Actually, fuck off. <laughs> I'll go Rare Drain Effect. Bardo. Shall we just go Rare Drain into your Rare Drain? Oh. So you take 400. That's fine. So 25 into 21. Oh. DP Effect. Uh, sure. So Arbor and Ross, I should have said, but you know, I should. Main Phase 2, end of Main 2. Mm -hmm. End phase, so just that will be on. So as soon as I resolve this, because I have nothing else to resolve. Mirror Jade, no. Yeah, if I have no resolution, I'll go all the Okay. Then you set rounded and red. Yes. How many cards in hand? Two. Two. Condemnation. Draw for turn? Yes. Stand by face. Resolve DP. Oh, you draw oh. the one. Albaz, Dark Monster. On the summon, yep. activate the belly and pay cost this card. Kit. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Pretty good card. Go to bed. Yeah, I'm actually gonna do the chain for cost. It's then for grand for cost. Fuck it, chicken strip. Chain ink three, grounded in red. Targeting. Tragedy. Chain retribution. And Rebade from the grave. Okay. Banish. Uh, I'll go back this. I'll take one. Uh, no, one. I'll take one. I guess I'll activate it. Send the Raigeki. Time to go end phase, if that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. Activate judgment. Mm -hmm. Resolution for the search of Travel Gate card. Yeah, that's fine. Can I double check some of the screens? What's up? Draw? Mm -hmm. Draw standby. You're fine. Main phase. Yes. <laughs> Arubo. Arubo effect. I can't allow you to get the Grand Infusion, so I have to chain I don't even know if that's correct or not. Retribution effect. Target fusion. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm accessing it anyway. <laughs> Two can play that game. <laughs> Grand Infusion. Alphas and Adria Bethel. Rebellion. Only I play Rebellion's effect. Alphas and Mirror Jade. Yes, I got another. Sapphire. Celestial effect. 
please, please give me good, please give me good. <laughs> battle do. So start snapping your battle phase. <laughs> uh, 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 Chain and Mary J. Pitching Albion. So, joke's on you, I'm not banishing Rebellion, I'm banishing Mary J. Okay. <laughs> so, you void wipe these two, yeah? Yeah. Then Mary J the fact. Main phase two. Tragedy. Is that fine? Sets uh, it to my fear. Yes. I am gonna pass to you. End of main. Uh, activate condemnation. Target Grand Fusion. You may proceed. Resolve Albion as well. Granted opening. Stand by main. Let's go opening. So, resolving effect. Mm -hmm. Pitch Enchantress. Yep. Comedy. Uh, I mean, you're absolutely I'll activate Grand Fusion. Albas. Bluffs. And Ghost Ogre. This is horrible, though. I hate this move. Albion. Albion effect on summon? Albion's fine. Albion's rebellion. Mm -hmm. Here? Nope. Oh, okay. so attack comedy with Albion. So, on attack deck. Grounded mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in red. Targeting Adria Um, sure. Okay, this is gonna give me an aneurysm. This, this, and Ooh, him. Ooh, the money car. <laughs> More <laughs> money! One Chimera, two Rapidon. Targeting Mary Jade. The game doesn't end, that's the thing. <laughs> like, even if I let this resolve, because then your board gets wiped in the end phase. But we're gonna game two anyway, fuck this. Okay. <laughs> like, actually. Oh, Jesus, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bingo bango. Wow. Activate oh, oh, use them You have to. Fantastic. Draw for two. Draw yeah. standby. Yeah. Bardo. End of Bardo. Because I don't feel good that I get to activate elsewhere. That is fine by me. Adventure. Again? Yeah. You fucking keep making me draw. You are the only person I've drawn this against. Pretty nasty. I'm so scared. Well, that would do it. That would do it. That would do it. <laughs> I don't even think that would do it. Draw for turn? Mm -hmm. You're kidding me. Crazy! Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, nothing. Yep, that's one. Turn. Oh my god. Draw, draw standby. You're fine. Alright, so let me show you my hero. But, uh, adventure effect? I hate that the token is 2k, 2k. It's so dumb. It, it came up today, bro. It's just so random. But I suppose yeah. the point is it's the core of the deck. Yeah. Effect anyway to add the monster. Sure. Then discard that. Wow, who saw that coming? So basically, yeah. effect bounce. Effect Griffin. Mm -hmm. Bother. Oh. Okay, just pass to you. Oh no. Oh my god. Draw for turn. Draw standby. Yeah, you're fine. Main phase. Yeah. I'll just go Draco back, thinking on target. Sure, the set. The set monster? Yeah, they're all set. Sorry, the set monster, dickhead. No, sure. Bother. Yeah. Anything in start step? No. 2k swing. I'll the 2k. And 2k. Uh, that is... GG. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey, thanks for winning. <laughs> God. So finishing locals with a 3-2 record, you know, a couple of bricks here and there, a couple of misplays, but three structure decks, mind you, gets us fourth place and some additional prizing. Absolutely incredible. It is time for some prize support. Now, I thought we were going to be coming out of locals with just the one OTS pack. We came fourth today, so we also have two packs of Battle of Chaos as well. Can we get our collection started? Can we get some trade bait? That is the question. Uh, is there anything we can actually use here? I mean, Alti Ecclesia is potentially usable if we want to go Dogmatica route, but we already played Dogmatica, so probably not. It would be funny if we pulled a secret rare Guardian Chimera out of Battle of Chaos. Who knows? Let's just dive in and see what we pull. We have Rock Scales, Neroy the Dream Mirror Traitor, Ghost Rick Siren, Skilled Brown Magician, and our first Hollow. Oh, is Ice Jade Creation Kingfisher. I don't think anyone is wanting this shit. So, uh, yep. First pack is a dud. We got Ghost Trick or Treat, Imprudent, Groza, and S-Force. Moving on to our second pack of Battle 
of chaos here. We'll pop four in the front. We'll get a little jiggy with it. Let's see. We have Flower Dino with that flower on his butthole there, his little flower bussy. We got Mutant Mutant, the great double casted caster. Smoke Mosquito. Dynamorphia Shell, Da 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 Headhunt, Kaiza, Maple Maiden, and we have a. Hey, we got an Ultra. Yo, DDD, Divisor King, Deuce Machinex. Let's go. That's actually a good pool. Uh, a lot of people played. This is actually played in the DDD deck, so. People might actually want this! Yo, we have trade bait! We have something for our binder! Yes, that's so cool! Now, for the moment, we have been waiting for the OTS 18 pack. Can we pull an ultimate rare? The odds are very, very slim, but can you imagine? Also, I think there's some good super rares in here as well. We have Destiny Hero Celestial, Ghost Rick Angel of Mischief, and we have... Ooh! Yo, Super Rare Contact C! This is actually... Some people are actually playing this right now. Uh, this is a decent card. We could actually play this, which is funny, but we could also trade this away. So we actually got some good pools in terms of trade baits here. Celestial, Angel of Mischief. I, I, I'm not complaining. Those are definitely some cards. We've officially got our trade binder started, but how is trading gonna work? What deck build are we gonna go for? You're just gonna have to wait and see.